was interested in from your perspective is, you know, one of the few people who's seen every one of Aaron Rodgers games in person. What was your reaction? I mean, we were obviously all expecting this, but to see it now become on the brink of official, what has been your reaction to, you know, him now being a member of another team? Well, you know, uh, Brandon, it's a situation where, you know, you're right. And I, I had the opportunity to televise Aaron's first start at Cal. So I really saw the start of his career as it, uh, you know, pertained to becoming a pro and then becoming an all-star and then a uh, Hall of Famer and a Super Bowl champion. Um, so it's a little bittersweet on one hand, but on the other hand, um, I'm also anxious to see what happens now, to see this organization move forward with a new quarterback and Jordan Love. He's done everything well. He's done everything right, listened to a lot of noise around him, uh, but has kept his nose to the grindstone and, and deserves this opportunity. So I'm excited in that regard. But on the other hand, Aaron and I are, are friends and it will always be. And um, you're right. I've had a chance to call all of his plays. It's been a, the honor of my career to do that. And so, uh, yeah, I'll miss him. There's no doubt about that. I did not know you did his first start in college, too. What, what network was that? That was with ESPN and it was a game at Illinois. Jeff Tedford, the coach at Cal, was alternating his quarterbacks. I believe it might have been Blake Bortles who was the other quarterback. It was the second week of the season or thereabouts, and it was Aaron's turn to start. And we were doing the game at Illinois. He played a very good Illinois defensive team under Lou Tepper um, and lit it up. And Randy Wright was my analyst at the time, the former Packers and Wisconsin quarterback. And he was very impressed. So I followed um, Aaron the following year, and he had a great game against the USC team that was a national championship team in the Coliseum where he completed 24 straight passes. And uh, when he was picked by Green Bay, I know a lot of people were booing the pick, but I, I kept telling people, hey, there's going to come a day when you really like this draft pick. And uh, so I, I felt very connected to Aaron from the beginning, and and he was a great player for this franchise. Really, really interesting. Um, you you kind of mentioned it there with people – booing the pick, I guess, when Rodgers was made. We have gone through the same thing with Jordan. Like, is it crazy to you the parallels we've seen from Favre to Rodgers now, from Rodgers to Love? I mean, even down to the getting traded to the Jets, right? It just seems like almost identical from every step of the way. It's amazing. I mean, you know, what was Jordan Love? Was he 26th or 24th? 26th, and Aaron was yeah. about the same area in the first round of the draft. Uh, the trade to the Jets. I mean, it's just incredible. I, I just can't believe it. it's like Groundhog Day 15 years later. Uh, you know, we mentioned you've you've called every single one of his plays. Can you ballpark the number of people that have seen every single one of his professional snaps? I know you and Larry have been there every step of the way. I imagine there's some staffers, front office people as well, but it's got to be a pretty small number of people, right, over the years that have actually been there for every single one. Yeah, um, probably is. I, I wouldn't be begin to tell you. I, I don't know how many that would be, but um, yeah, uh, it, it's you know I would think um, Red Batty, the equipment manager. Um, you know, I, I think Flea uh, also is there. Some of the some of the people who have been there, um, uh, T Bone, and uh, who's also involved with the team on a regular basis. Um, Oh, gosh, probably Dr. McKenzie. Yeah. Uh, these are people who've been around and, and have played a significant role in the back, uh, the background of Aaron's career. Uh, very significant role, but um, there aren't that many who've seen every single one of them. Tough to narrow down, I'm sure, but maybe you've been asked this so many times you've been able to narrow it down. What what memories, moments of, of his throughout his career as a Packer stand out to you? Well, I think the game in Atlanta, the playoff game in Atlanta, the Packers are, you know, an underdog. They go in against the number one seed in the NFC, the Atlanta Falcons. It's a Saturday night, and Aaron Rodgers just lit the building up. Um, I'll never forget that game. Uh, Tremont Williams made a pick six right at the uh, right before halftime that gave the Packers a 14-point lead, and they never looked back. And at that point in time, I knew for a fact they were going to win the Super Bowl. And then his performance in the Super Bowl, the precision, if you go back and look at just the highlights, of the NFL film highlights, you'll see so many passes that just were fitted into an incredibly small window, um, just a flick over the uh, outreached, outstretched arm or fingertips of a defender, uh, the precision with which he played. And I think that really overall, uh, the thing that separates Aaron 
from any other Packers quarterback, with the exception of Bart Starr, is the precision with which he played the game. The uh, few mistakes he made in quarterbacking the team, the, the interception, uh, to touchdown to interception ratio is just second to none in the league. And he and he was probably, in my opinion, a uh, modern day Bart Starr. He ran the offense that way um, with that kind of efficiency. The, the Super Bowl, the, the throw to Jennings, and I think it was a third and 10 comes to mind. Like we were playing back some of his, you know, just best throws, best plays yesterday. And that one is like right over the middle, third and 10 late in the game, just darts it in there. That's one that that stands out to me. I mean, he had some throws in that game that were were just remarkable. Yeah, there was a point in that Super Bowl where nobody could catch the ball from the Packers. Jordy Nelson must have dropped four balls. He would have set the all-time Super Bowl receiving record had he caught a couple of more passes. But he had a tough game in that regard and then caught a touchdown pass to help win the game. But you're right, the pass to uh, Jennings, they were struggling in the second half. The Super Bowl was slipping away from them. They needed to make a first down, and that was a huge play right there. I know we talked a little bit earlier about the parallels to Brett, but – I don't know if this got quite as ugly as it did with Brett. I mean, there were some things that that summer that I, I was in high school at the time, but, you know, I just remember being like, wow, you know, thing, things got a little, a little rough at times. This one, certainly not as bad, at least not recently, you know, maybe two years ago when will he, won't he report to training camp, all of that. But from your point of view, is, is it possible for a, a, a marriage that lasts this long to not get a little ugly at the end when it, when it splits? Yeah, I think the one that I would draw the parallel to would be Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Um, that was a very long marriage and a tremendously fruitful marriage, I might add. Um, and that didn't end necessarily very well. So I think that's that's the kind of parallel I would rather draw than, um, you know, Brett was here for a long time as well. 15 years, that's a long time in sports. And so, um, yeah. And it's funny, whenever it ends, it seems like with in most cases, unless you're John Elway winning a Super Bowl or or uh, Peyton Manning going out on a Super Bowl win, it never seems to end quite well. Um, but I think, you know, uh, it certainly ends at some point, and, and that's what happened here. What are the odds they hit on a third straight Hall of Fame quarterback? <laughs> uh, you know, I hope they have because – I know Jordan Love, and I he, I really respect the way he's come in, kept his nose to the grindstone, uh, tuned out all the noise around him, improved each year he's been here, uh, deserves this opportunity. Do we? He's done everything he can to be ready for this opportunity. Now it's a matter of can he play at that level or not. Um, boy, I wouldn't be able to know. I wouldn't even want to put a, uh, that on him. That's that's a fair point. I mean, he's got to come in and face so much of that, I guess, expectation would be the word for it. And it's like, let's back off and let the kid, you know, just just play a little bit without putting that on him. But at the same time, I guess that's kind of the, the nature of it, right? Especially playing for a franchise like the Green Bay Packers. There's going to be a lot of eyes on him. No question about it. But, you know, he's done everything. He's done the reps in practice. He's done the OTAs, the mini camps, training camp, preseason games. He's filled in for Rodgers a couple of times in regular season games. Um, the Packers have seen all they need to see of him. Now, do they know? Are they convinced they have a quarterback? Well, they hope they do and they think they do, but they won't know until he's handed the keys to the car and drives off the lot in September. In other words, till he starts the regular season and plays a full regular season to where he's going up against defenses that are skewed to stop him. And, and what kind of a quarterback will he be under those circumstances over the long haul of a season when people are preparing for him? Uh, that's what we need to find out. And the only way we can do that is for him to go out there and play in a regular season on a regular basis. Now we talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but just in general, your thoughts on the return that Brian got back. There was obviously a long process for all of this and a lot of negotiating uh, throughout all of it. And it seems to have been a pretty positive reception for what Green Bay got back here. Yeah, I think overall, certainly nationally, people seem to feel that way. I, I think for the Jets, did they they paid a lot? Yes, they did. Um, but they feel like this is the final piece to making them a Super Bowl team. We'll see. I mean, we'll see how that works out. But the Packers got a second round pick this year. They flipped from 15 to 13 this year in the draft. That's significant. I understand they gave up, what, a fifth rounder. They got a sixth round back this year. Those picks, to me, are inconsequential. Those are scouts' picks. Um, but the second round pick 
next year, which could easily become a first round pick. The condition being that Aaron plays 65% of the snaps for the Jets this year. Um, that's probably going to be a first round pick, and that's huge next year. Um, and when you have two first round picks in a draft, you can do a lot of different things with those. Furthermore, the Packers now have four picks in the top 100 in this year's draft. That's significant. And overall, if you look at draft capital and the formulas that people use for gauging how much capital you have going into a draft, the Packers rank fifth in the league in terms of draft capital. So Brian Gutekunst has a chance to really fill out his roster or make the kind of moves that would get him exactly the players he wants in this draft. That move, two spots, 15 to 13, Like people on, on the on the surface look at it and say, ah, it's two spots. But like looking at the trade charts, that's a – big jump right there from 15 to 13 how how important do you think it was to get that swap I think it's very important um and maybe not necessarily for the Packers to get their player there um the one thing Brian Gutekunst has shown us he's not afraid to trade draft picks up or down the board um now he's got an extra second round pick um maybe he packages that tr that pick into to move up into the top 10 of the draft possibly or maybe he trades back because maybe one of those quarterbacks starts slipping and somebody in the middle of the draft starts panicking and says, hey, we want to trade up and get Anthony Richardson. Maybe they trade up to the 13th pick and maybe Green Bay gets another second round pick, uh, maybe a third or something like that. Uh, but, you know, uh, Gutekunst is in a good position here with this pick. And if he stays pick, stays in that 13th place, Brandon. This is an opportunity for him to get the best player who's on the board at that time, regardless of position. And we know he likes to move around, too. <laughs> has not been yep. shy about tr draft day trades in the past, so a lot of ammo to do that. Uh, lastly, there's so many look at the roster, so many depth needs, at least. I mean, I think the starters are pretty well set, but obviously you're going to need depth to go through an NFL season. What, what do you see as the biggest need on this roster right now? I think right away, two positions jump out at me. Tight end, number one, because I don't know if they do have a starter at the tight end spot right now. Um, number two would be safety. There really a lot of question marks at the safety uh, position. Um, you know, I, I think they may have had a kid they drafted late in the draft last year who might factor into that. We'll see what happens when we get into the OTAs and then the mini camp and then obviously uh, training camp. But I, right now, those are the two positions that to me, I think they'd like to get a starter in this draft at each of those positions if they can. Um, obviously, edge rusher, you could always use one of those. You could always use an offensive lineman, a tackle, uh, who you either play a guard or play a tackle. Um, but, you know, when I look at that 13th pick, Brandon, I see a situation where – um, if the right offensive tackle falls to that spot, do the Packers need an offensive tackle this year? Perhaps not, but I guarantee you by next year they will. And that's what you want. That's how you draft effectively. You not only pick to try to fill a need this year, but a lot of what the draft is about is making sure you've got your roster set to compensate for the losses that are going to be inevitable next year. Awesome. Thanks, Wayne. I appreciate you taking some time for me. You bet, Brandon. We'll see you this weekend. Yes, sir. See you there.